up, Leo? Hey, Leah, how's it going? It's going good. How about you? Doing good. A little tired, but doing good. So we'll start. Go ahead. Um. So my first question is, uh, what was the communication process during the challenge where you had to split up and then come back together? Right. So Ooh, well, there was no communication. Uh, they told they tell us the uh, that they hold it as a surprise what the challenge is right up until the moment. So there's no ahead of time planning. Uh, but they told us you're going to split up. So we just said, okay, I'll I'll do land. You do Z. So we split up right there. Um, yeah, we were just uh, working. That, there was no chatting whatsoever. No, we weren't even allowed in the brick pit at the same time. Mm -mm. And uh, yeah, just absolutely. There's a big wall, and we just hope that the other our teammates doing good. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I think we struggled a bit in the other half of that episode when we had to combine the two because our builds are really different. That was a very difficult challenge, but it was fun. Um. So another question is, what what build was the most like technically difficult to build, and why? Hmm. Go ahead, bro. Um. Let's see. I would say. One of the hardest ones for me was making sure that that hat would stay on my head. Oh, and it was yeah. so big and so heavy. And we were using bricks, not Technic or anything mm -hmm. lighter. So that just making sure that it was really big and impressive, yet actually was able to wear it and let go for five seconds was crazy. I've never done anything. I mean, we've never done anything no. that like cutting edge crazy. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm going to follow up on the communication question. So mm -hmm. we're from Geek Mom. And so as brothers, mm -hmm. did you find it impacted the ability for you two to communicate as siblings as well as teammates? Well, I think we had an advantage over some of the other teams because of that, because obviously we grew up together and we built together so much and uh, we really know what the other teammate can do or what they struggle on or what something they really like to build or how fast they can build it so that really helped us out a lot a lot of the communication was just infrastructure with, uh, with just our relationship it was very convenient um, it was essentially intuitive like yeah. we really know each other like the back of each other's hands so mm -hmm. it, it, the, we almost had to didn't have to communicate as much because we're like you're going to do that and he's yeah, like oh yeah. obviously yeah, I'm yeah. You'll be <laughs> sure, you know, this one is just, it, it kind of guided itself throughout the whole yeah. way. Now, there were times when we communication broke down a little bit, like if we were very stressed, very tired, or, you know, whatever circumstance. But uh, generally, we clicked really well. Um. So did you ever go into the challenges with a plan, or did you, like, make the plan up when the challenge started? Yeah, so um, almost every single time, we had no idea what we were building, so we didn't have a plan going into it. But on the last one, we had a clue from last season that it was probably going to be a 24-hour really big build. So we had an idea in our head what we would probably make if it was that kind of situation. And it was. Um, did you guys have to stay up for 24 hours and pull an all-nighter to do it? <laughs> no, thank goodness. You would have, you would have probably yeah, you would have been on the floor passed out. Yeah, yeah, sure. did, yeah. No, it was over three days, but it okay. was 24 hours long. So... It was uh, seven, eight, and nine hours, if I recall correctly. Um, very long days, but uh, yeah, not exactly 24 hours straight. So, yeah. What are some tips and you would give to kids who now are going to look up to you and say, we want to be just like you? Because I heard your speech where you guys were like, you know, dream your dreams and go after them. So what would you tell kids? Well, one, the first thing I would say is be dauntless. Go out there and do what you want to do. Have fun. And don't let anyone uh, tell you basically like you can't do it. You're, you're not good enough. Like uh, that all comes at some point. You know, it's like you're going to uh, do well once you start to get experience, practice, work hard. And then uh, secondly, learn what you like to do and really go after it. Focus mm -hmm. on things. Uh, don't be afraid to get really skilled at something. Yeah. And always, always build for yourself. Always build for yourself for what you would like to make. Yeah. Um, it's very easy to get caught up in trends. It's very easy to get caught up in what's popular in Lego or something like that. Or in other and, things. Or in other things. And that's totally fine to build what you like and what other people share an interest. But generally, you should always build for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's really brought such iconic styles for me and Mark because we really build what we like to build. And uh, that's really where you, you'll, you won't be burned out if you're building for yourself. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, and 
You guys are really related to Lego Masters. I just kind of wanted to know what your favorite Lego set was. Oh, that's a good question. I know that mine is the classic yellow castle from uh, it's 1978, mm -hmm. and it's it's just it's actually right over there. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um, it's it's one of the first sets to have minifigures, and it's also the first castle set. And we really like castles. Oh, yeah. so that is my favorite set. Uh, I, I do, my favorite changes all the time, honestly. I, I can't really decide. I do love Cafe Corner. It started its own Lego Renaissance with architecture. Beautiful set. Um, I also do like Lego Wally from Lego Ideas. That's a really good one too. So, you know, random stuff here and there, but uh, you know, I like the castle too, especially that, that is a nice set. And did you learn a lot? Do you prefer to build a set because you like to follow the architecture, like the process of doing it and learning around, you know, how they put it together and how they design it? Or are you one of those people who likes to go all the way into the end project and you just like having that done so you can look at it and see it? Hmm. I'd say for me, it's um, I'll build a set mostly just because I got the set and I want to have that building experience. It's pretty fun. You can see mm -hmm. what different techniques you might not be that familiar with. Um, so that's the main thing for me. And then once it's built, we actually, it's kind of in often that we keep them together. We end up taking them apart and using the pieces in our own builds pretty soon mm -hmm. after. So that's just the nature of uh, becoming a, a Lego master. You have to be able to <laughs> take things apart and you have to be able to grow and change. That was a knowing look there. <laughs> we know that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, don't ever be afraid to take apart a Lego set. Um, that's definitely something like Keep the instructions. Keep the instructions. Always keep the instructions, but um, never be afraid to take apart a set. I do like making sets, especially if it's a really good one, or if it's from maybe a Lego designer I know of or something like that. That's always really exciting. Um, but yeah, you know, sets are, you know, they have their place. Um, do you have any other questions? I have one more mm -hmm. question. Which um, challenge at the end did you have the most doubts on? Mm, most doubts. Um, I think I was most scared during the third episode, which was the sh tower shape. We were in the bottom three, pretty solidly in the bottom three, too. We were very low on that Richter scale. Uh, that was when I was probably the scaredest, you know, that was, that was pretty intimidating. Yeah, I'd say, um, honestly, episode nine, we had to mash up our two very different oh, features, yeah. <laughs> and we weren't sure if we were going to be in the bottom two and lose the golden break or even go home. And I think that was when it was kind of like, like it could go either way. We really don't know, but uh, ended up working out pretty well for us. So. That's all from me. Oh, I'm going to ask at least one more question for parents, <laughs> because again, I'm from the parenting blog side of things. What advice would you give parents mm -hmm. when their kids say that they want to follow their dreams? Okay, so my first advice to parents would be allow your kid to be creative. Um, and you want to make sure your work your workspace is clean but allow them to have a buildup for a couple of days. Don't have to clean it up right away. A little mess is actually really good for us. Same thing. thing. You know, that was your line. Don't be afraid of a little mess. You know, a little mess is not gonna, it's not the end of the world. Let them be creative. Let them try out all these cool different combinations. And, you know, always, yeah, it's not, you, obviously you wanna have a, a structure so you don't get bogged down by a mess, but, you know, you should always let yourself find that, find that balance of creativity and, you know, messiness. Cause you know, Every kid is different, and you want to make sure you give them just, just don't the right Don't be afraid to take apart sets, too. That's a, you know, you've got to be able to make your own stuff. Yeah, our parents will always say, oh, they spent so long making it. Why would they take it apart? Because Lego isn't glued together. It's meant to come apart. It's meant to be rearranged. You know, that's, that's the joy of it. You know, it's like crayons. You, you, know, you, you keep coloring. You don't just use them once and put them away. Mm -hmm. the same thing. And what is the technique that, what set do you feel you learned the most about building from? Hmm. Set. I know that the big creator modulars, so the last one I did was the assembly square is huge. Oh, yeah. And there's all these very intricate details and uh, textures mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, techniques that are used to make all these amazing little uh, shop faces mm -hmm. and, and rooms. And so there's there's so many great techniques in those builds. They're obviously a big set, kind of like a Christmas present level set. Yeah. You don't get these every End day. Year set. But yeah. you, you really learn a lot from building those. On a smaller scale, I do love the speed champions, the cars. Um, I don't build a lot of structures like that. I like flowing organic dragons and stuff like that. When I get to build like a like the Corvette or the La Ferrari or the Bugatti, it's like, oh, those are really, really slick. You know, you get to uh, you get to have more fun with weirder parts, you know, like always branch your uh, always try to expand your horizon.
And the last question, I guess, isn't really a question. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the geek mom and geek dad watchers and readers and listeners? Oh, maybe your book? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. This is a plug-in, a very obvious plug-in. But uh, I wrote a book, um, Post Lego Masters. It's called The uh, the Inner Workings of a Lego Mind. Oh. It's very bright in here, but yeah, The Inner Workings of a Lego Mind. It's on Amazon. It's a gallery book of all of my favorite creations over the years. I go through and commentary, talk about them. Yep, it's a really that fun resource. so awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, can we get it? We can get it. Nice. Yeah. I mean, clearly we just bought one or will in the next 10 minutes. So congratulations. There you go. Yeah, awesome. you can get them on Amazon. It works with a Lego mind. Also my website, brotherstevenbuilds.com. It's the same thing. But uh, yeah, um, that's one thing. Always see if you can find that good uh, avenue to the Lego community because not every kid can get it. You know, a lot of this is online. You can't just surf the web. But uh, yeah, this is a really, oh, oh, find out, go to the conventions, find that Lego community outlet. I think that'll be really rewarding. Well, thank you. And I don't want to take any more of your time because I know you guys and I know everybody has a lot of want to talk to you today. So thank you so much.